My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. I'll be one of my friends. I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. This market is hostage to the COVID vaccines, including today where the Dow dipped eight points. That's to be advanced 0.23%. NASDAQ gained 0.43%. Unfortunately, the vaccination process is a lot more complicated than you think. I'm not talking about getting the actual shot. I got mine done today. Painless, on time, sweet people, little post-jab, cooling off period, then right back to work. Granted, I have one of my colleagues, Heather Gaines, refresh the healthcare page endlessly until a spot opened up at 12.45 p.m. in Staten Island. But at least in New York, it's kind of feeling like somewhat getting our act together. Make my Moderna two shots, please. The problem, though, is the federal government, and not because of the House vote this afternoon to impeach the president for a second time, something that, of course, is always worrisome after what happened last Wednesday. And don't forget, we have the inauguration where we know that anything can happen. You see, the Trump White House has cooked up a ridiculous method of shipping the vaccines from the factory to the distributor to the state facility. And from there, every state needs to figure it out on its own. There are too many steps. The states, for the most part, don't know what they are doing. And that's why we've administered less than a third of the 22 million doses that have been distributed. And by the way, there's millions behind it. Our scientists have done so much. The Moderna vaccine that I got, the Pfizer vaccine, the one-stop shot that J&J's working on that we got some good news this very evening. Well, that one's easier to produce and it works almost as well. So in theory, we could have that vaccine glut that I've been talking about once the second quarter occurs if J&J gets approved. But all of that's being wasted because the feds, they don't have a real plan. Still, as I waited for my shot today, I kept thinking about how that could be about to change. If President-elect Biden puts his mind to it, we could have the military, still a revered institution, distributing vaccines in every high school in America. That's what they did for polio when I was a kid. With a real plan, we could have the whole country vaccinated as soon as there's enough supply Look, I know this is mad money, not mad public health. But when you hear the jubilation in people's voices after they get the shot, like they did the person before me and the person after me, you realize that there are two polar opposite worlds in this country. There's the world of anger, divisive, violence. We saw that last week. And the happy-go-lucky world where we finally beat COVID, we go back to normal. My trip to Staten Island for the vaccine was an epiphany for me. I shared it with you, by the way, on Twitter. So let me tell you what this world could be like if the government finally gets its act together and more people get vaccinated as I did today. First, you hear a lot about a vaccine shortage, but we don't have a shortage. We only have a supply chain problem. The shortage is a canard. When the mayor of New York talks about not having enough doses, as he did the other day, it's not that those doses don't exist. The CEO of Pfizer just told us, make Terrell on our own network. He's got millions and millions of them. We're just not doing anything with them. I want to give them to the military, but the military is busy right now. They aren't being ordered to get the vaccines out. It almost seems like they're more worried about ensuring a peaceful transfer of power next week. Not that I can blame them, given what we're hearing about what the FBI is talking about. We don't want last week's failed putsch to re-emerge. You know what? We haven't seen a situation this dangerous since the Civil War. How convenient to find all those Confederate flags in the Capitol the other day. But every day the craziness plays out in Washington, we actually find more good stocks that are worth buying. We literally hold our noses and buy. I think that makes sense given the elation I saw as people left the little white vaccine tent that I went to in Staten Island. A little bit of America. America that we like. America that we really like. Look, I'm not saying happy days are here again. Not when we're worried about another attack on the inauguration. Not when there's so few people have been vaccinated. Not when I'm lucky and you may not be. But I am hopeful that as more people get vaccinated and you get lucky, everything gets easier and cities come roaring back to life. I believe that will happen. Also, just to make one thing clear, I did not jump the line as so many have accused me. I got the vaccine because despite appearance. I'm 65 and it was my turn, at least in New York. 
And I do feel very lucky, especially given the rapid spread and the new, more transmissible strain that is coming and in many places is here. The clock is ticking. It's not too late for the federal government to get it right. And I know I have one more to go before I can even think about being immunized. Uh, February 10, and then you have to wait two weeks before you're really in Nirvana. Still, I am halfway there, and that's giving me hope. And it's not the only reason I feel upbeat about the market. Let me tick some things down. Yes, I'm choosing to be happy in celebration because I never thought this day would come. Well, first, let's start there. Let's start with science and ingenuity. See, a year ago this week, I was traipsing around that J.P. Morgan healthcare conference, okay? And I bumped into this real nice guy, Steph, Stephanie, Steph, I wasn't sure how to pronounce his name, Stephan, Stephane, Bansell, okay? Stephane Bansell. He was telling me some story about crunching numbers to design some special vaccine using RNA technology. I mean, this thing was going right over my head. Uh, Moderna. I thought it was like a town in Italy. I mean, it sounded pretty darn good. He ran this company, and it had about a $20 stock. It seemed intriguing. I sat down, I listened, talked, I recommended it to you. Seemed like we were working on the biggest breakthrough since Salk beat polio. Maybe it was his Jenner invented vaccines. Uh, a truly breakthrough stuff. Well, fast forward a year. Uh, I'm getting jabbed in the arm with what? With this guy's COVID vaccine. He's my hero. Second, how about Lisa Sue, the brilliant CEO of AMD? Today, the CEO of Intel, Bob Swan, lost his job, not long after being promoted from the CFO spot. The board replaced him with a very good old Intel hand who has been at VMware, Pat Gelsinger, and it, it, it could be good. As much as Intel needs a change, what matters here is that you're now getting a chance to buy Intel's more agile rival, AMD, down more than three bucks for something that may not even happen, a turn at Intel within the next three years. Hey, Gelsinger did a good job at VMware, but Intel doesn't really need an old Intel hand. It needs someone new, young, hungry, who can shake up the culture, if not blow it up entirely. Short of that, I'd much rather buy the stock of a company that's beating Intel to a pulp, AMD. Under Lisa Su's incredible leadership, they've gone from an also-ran semiconductor, always second fiddle to Intel, to being the one that makes better chips. Oh, and look out if NVIDIA is allowed to buy ARM holdings. That may relegate Intel to permanent second-tier status. Third, I want to salute another one that we talk about. I want to salute plug power, okay? Uh, like, look, on October 26, when everyone was doubting this darn thing, but I kind of liked it, stock was at 14, we spoke to CEO Andy Marsh. He, turned, he told us about the future of hydrogen power. He said it's now. Marsh had worked for years to get to this moment where hydrogen fuel cells are finally about to go commercial. He used to work in the cell phone industry, and he explained that hydrogen is approaching the tipping point like cell phones did in the 90s. The technology was unwieldy and uneconomic back then, but thanks to innovation and increased scale. Well, <laughs> cell phones, indispensable, ubiquitous. Marsh told us the same thing would now happen with hydrogen fuel cells. And when he said now, he meant like now. I, mean, I pushed back immediately. I said, come on, it tech's way too expensive. He said the same thing was true for cell phones. I said, well, it's impractical. He said the same things were true about cell phones, maybe the size of car batteries. Well, given the fact that plug power is now at 69, it's clear that he was right. In two weeks, the company got a $1.5 billion infusion from SK Group, uh, third largest company in South Korea, but they didn't even need the money, but they got it. Then yesterday, they signed a joint venture deal with Renault to build hydrogen-powered vehicles and fueling stations. Remember, he said it was turnkey product with production starting next year. Now, all they need is to deal with a major integrated oil like a BP or Exxon or Royal Dutch to get their infrastructure all over the place, although maybe the oils just uh, get left behind because they just don't get the program. Listen. It, it, it took Moderna a full year to go from 20 to 124, and Moderna had a lot of help from the pandemic. Meanwhile, plug power is going from 14 to 69 in less than three months. These two stocks say it all for this stock market. The bottom line, rather than dwell on the negativity in our nation's capital and about the impeachment, which many other people can go on and on about, uh, and there's a lot to feel bad about what's happening in Washington, I'd rather focus on ingenuity and opportunity and good news. Tough to find in Washington, especially on a night of impeachment. But they're all over the place in this stock market. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com. Or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC.
on YouTube.